Hey, hello and welcome back everybody. This video is just going to be worked examples for the complex numbers and algebra. And we're just going to look at really four complex numbers under some operations. And we're going to do the following for, for all of them. So for each of the following, compute and compute quite a few things. We're going to com compute the normal form, the polar form, the complex conjugate, the magnitude, the real part, the imaginary part, and plot on the complex plane. Okay, so what are the four operations that we're going to work with here? Try to make it explicit. We'll do 1 minus i times 2 minus 2i. We will do 3 minus i divided by 2 minus i. We will do e to the 6i minus 2e to the negative 2i. And we will do e to the 2i minus e to the i pi. So those are going to be four, you know, four terms that we're going to try to pull off each of the above with. So maybe I'll add some vertical lines here. So we can do each of the above. So the first thing it says, compute into normal form. Well, in the first case, I know all I have to do to compute to normal form is to FOIL. And so what I'm going to do is take that 1 times 2, get 2. I'm going to take 1 times negative 2i minus 2i. I'm going to take negative i times 2 and get negative 2i. I'm going to get negative i times negative 2i. I will get plus, because there's two negatives multiplying together, i squared, and there's a 2. Okay, so if I simplify this a little bit, i squared times 2 is a negative 1 times 2. I'm actually going to get a 0 in the leading term here. And then in the imaginary terms, I'm going to get, this will be 0 for the real term, the imaginary terms, minus 4i. So that is my normal form. Let's convert to normal form in the second case. Second case, I unfortunately have to play that game of division, where when we run division, we have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So 2 minus i conjugate, 2 minus i conjugate. What does that look like? It looks like 3 minus i times 2 plus i, because that's the definition of the conjugate, divided by 2 minus i times 2 plus i, because that's the conjugate. Now I have to play FOIL games on the numerator and denominator. I end up with 6, those are my first. I end up with 6i, or 3i, sorry. I end up with negative 2i, and I end up with negative i squared. In my denominator, I end up with 4. I end up with plus 2i. I end up with minus 2i. I end up with minus i squared. That leaves me with... 6 minus i squared, so that's plus 1. So 7 plus 3i minus 2i is going to be plus i divided by the positive 2i, negative 2i cancel here. That negative i squared is positive 1 divided by 5. I can now distribute the 5 to both terms in the numerator, and I end up with 7 fifths plus i 1 fifth. So that is my normal form in the second case. Normal form in the third case, oof, that looks pretty bad. So what you have to do, if you start out with a polar, right, this is currently in polar form, we need to go from polar to normal before we can get any farther. And let's recall up here, recall polar to normal. We have r e to the i theta equals r cosine theta plus i r sine theta. And in fact, if we wanted to do the opposite, normal to polar, we have x plus i y equals root x squared plus y squared e to the i inverse tangent y divided by x. So neither of them look great, but we're just focusing on this one for this problem. When we focus on that one for this problem, we're looking at r in both cases. So that's the radius, which is the term out front there. So it's going to be r and r. And what do we do? And then we have theta here and theta here, so theta, theta. 
we just extract those terms. So we end up with r cosine theta. So that's a one. So I have one cosine theta here is six plus i, and then r is still one, sine theta is still six. Minus r is two, cosine theta is negative two, plus i sine theta is negative two. And I forgot my r there, so there's still a two on this i sine term. Two right there as well. Now all I have to do, since they're in normal form, is take the real part and the real part and subtract those. So I have something like cosine of six minus two cosine of negative two plus i, and then my sine term, or my imaginary terms, I have sine of six minus two sine of negative two. And so this doesn't look like it's finished, but this is actually finished. This is truly a normal form. You can tell because I have a single number there and then an i and a single number there. Now those numbers aren't explicit. I don't have them in decimal form or anything, but I don't need them to be explicit. I'm fairly satisfied with them the way they are. So that's my conversion of that expression to normal form. And we have one more lovely case here where we get to play the exact same game. So I'm looking for r, looks like r is one here, theta is two. I'm looking for r, looks like r is negative one there, theta is pi. So here I have the first term is turning into cosine of two plus i sine of two. And the second term is minus one cosine of pi minus i sine of pi. Now my life can get a little bit easier here because cosine of pi is negative one and sine of pi is zero. So my life does get a little bit easier. And I'm left with cosine of two minus negative one. So that's in other words, one plus cosine of two plus i, and then I have a sine of two and a zero. So I just have sine of two. And as before, this doesn't look like it's very simplified, but that is as good as it gets. That is definitely in normal form because I've converted everything to a real number plus i times another real number. So that's me doing the first step. The second step says, now write these in polar form. And the fact that they're all in normal form allows me to get into polar fairly fairly quickly. Let's say this is in the normal. Now we're gonna do polar. Now will extend these lines down. Let's just recall, if I scroll back up, to go from normal to polar, I'm just gonna be following that identity. So x plus i, y, I'm going to extract both x and y, and write the square root of x squared plus y squared e to the i inverse tangent of y over x. So here's my x is 0, my y is negative 4, because I just calculated those two terms. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write root x squared plus y squared e to the i inverse tangent y over x, which in this case will be the square root of 0 squared plus 4 squared e to the i inverse tangent y over x, where y over x is negative four divided by zero. And all of a sudden you may be worried because I'm dividing by zero. We should really interpret this negative four divided by zero as negative infinity, which is well-defined on the inverse tangent because the tangent graph looks like this. And so you can think of negative infinity as negative pi over two. So negative infinity is negative pi over two on the uh, inverse tangent direction. So we end up with the square root of 16, which is four e to the negative i pi over two. That's the polar form of zero minus four i. We do the same thing up here, identify x and y. So it looks like x is seven fifths and y is one fifth. All we have to do is construct square root seven fifths squared plus one fifth squared e to the i inverse tangent of one fifth divided by seven fifths. So there you're just uh, dividing fractions that'll end up being as one seventh. And if I simplify these terms a little bit, that's a root 50 over 25, also known as root two. So root two e to the i inverse tangent, just simplify that a little bit to one seventh. You don't have to simplify any more than that. I'm perfectly content if you leave your answer like the following. So you do not need to simplify if there aren't any exact values for specific numbers that are gonna show up but this definitely is, is good enough and in polar form for me. Now this next case is going to be quite tricky. Uh, math can be ugly and we just have to be okay with math being ugly sometimes. And so I can identify x and y and we say that root x squared plus y squared e to the i inverse tangent y over x. 
I really don't need anybody to simplify anything here in this course. So if you want to get away with just writing it down as directly grabbing X from the above and Y from the above and not simplifying anything, I am more than happy with that. So just go ahead and write it as cos six minus two cos negative two squared plus sine six minus two sine negative two squared times e to the i inverse tangent of sine six minus two sine negative two divided by cosine six minus two cosine negative two. I really do not need you to write it in any more complicated or non-complicated of terms than that. You could plug everything into a calculator and give me something pretty. I really don't need you to. I am content with this. So when you're filling out quizzes, etc., you can be content with that as well. In the last case, we'll do the same sort of thing. So this will be x and y. And so we have root x squared plus y squared e to the i inverse tangent y over x. And that's going to be equal to root 1 plus cosine 2 squared plus sine 2 squared times e to the i inverse tangent sine 2 divided by 1 plus cosine 2. I really don't need anything more from you. So as a normal and polar representation of those two, what did it ask for next? It asked for the complex conjugate of the solution. So if I scroll down and extend my lines to run a complex conjugate of the solutions, I can do that. And if you want to do this with the normal form, you can. If you want to do it with the polar form, you can. All you have to do, never forget, is replace each i with minus i. That's all it means to take a complex conjugate. Let's go ahead and do the normal forms of these. So if I'm starting with 0 minus 4i, I'm replacing i with negative i. That means that negative 4 becomes positive 4. That's it. Same here. If I'm working with 7 fifths plus 1 fifth i, we're going to do 7 fifths plus 1 fifth i. Conjugate is 7 fifths minus 1 fifth. Similarly here, I mean, the numbers are ugly, but you just work with what you got. I'm going to take the conjugate of cosine 6 minus 2 cosine negative 2 plus i sine 6 minus 2 sine negative 2. All I do is go ahead and find my i. There it is. I'm going to replace it with a minus i. So we end up with cosine 6 minus 2 cosine negative 2 minus i sine 6 minus 2 sine negative 2. And same with the last case, just going to be looking at the normal form there and replacing i with negative i. So I'm taking the compass conjugate of 1 plus cosine 2 plus i sine 2. And what I end up with is 1 plus cosine 2 minus i sine 2. Not bad in all of the cases. And this will continue for the real and imaginary parts that I care about coming up next. So we were also asked to compute the real part. The real part in the first case is just going to be the real part of that term, which is fairly easy to decide, is the term without the i on it. So that's going to be 0. So 0 minus 4i. The real part of that is 0. The real part of 7 fifths plus i times 1 fifth is just the term without an i on it, also known as 7 fifths. The real part of this lovely large expression, cosine 6 minus 2 cosine negative 2 minus i sine 6 minus 2 sine negative 2. I'm just going to be looking at the term without an i on it. And so that will be cosine 6 minus 2 cosine negative 2. And finally, the real part of 1 plus cosine 2 minus i sine 2 is exactly the term without an i on it, also known as 1 plus cosine 2. There are my four real parts. I want to find the imaginary part. It's kind of like what's left over after the real part. So the imaginary part, I am on 0 minus 4i. Now this is important, right? The imaginary part does not contain the i, it contains the coefficient on the i. So the coefficient on the i is negative 4. The imaginary part here of 7 fifths plus 1 fifth i. The coefficient on the i term is 1 fifth. I don't include the i itself in the imaginary part, but I include its coefficient. 
the imaginary part of cosine 6 minus 2 cosine negative 2 minus i sine 6 minus 2 sine negative 2. I'm just looking at the coefficient on the imaginary part. And that's going to be all of this along with the minus sign. It's going to be negative sine 6 plus 2 sine negative 2. And then finally, the imaginary part of 1 plus cos 2 minus i sine 2. Just looking at the coefficient of the imaginary part, that is exactly negative because the minus sign sine 2. So that's me computing everything I was asked to compute. We can finish if we want by saying and plot on the complex plane. So we'll go ahead and plot these on the complex plane. To do that, I'm actually going to type these into my calculator, and in fact, I'll type this into my calculator too, write it all as decimals, um, because if it's not as decimals, it makes it a lot harder to go ahead and plot. So I'm gonna go ahead and compute all of those on my calculator, and what I end up with is the following four points. So there's that zero minus four i, which was you know, my original first uh, result that I had, but my, my later results is seven fifths and one fifth i is 1.4 plus 0.2 i, and then the crazy cosines and sines reduced to 1.79, and 1.54i, and then 1 plus cosine of 2 is about uh, 0.58, and sine of 2 is about 0.91. So these are going to be the four points that I'm plotting on the complex plane. Let's just recall that's my x-coordinate, that's my y-coordinate, my x-coordinate, my y-coordinate, my x-coordinate, my y-coordinate, my x-coordinate, and my y-coordinate. So if I want to plot these, here's my plane, which we'll call r and i r, and then we'll just go ahead and for the first point, let's go, let's choose blue for the first point, zero minus four i. So one, two, three, four i, and then zero in the x direction, here it is. Let's choose green for my second point, 1.4 in the x direction, so let's say one, two, so maybe 1.4 is about there, and then point two, there's one, so point two is probably about there. Here is 1.4 plus i times 0.2. Let's choose red for the third case, 1.79 in the x direction, maybe about there, and 1.54 in the positive wider, so there's 1, 2, so 1.54 is maybe about there. We can go about here, 0.79 plus i, 1.54, and then let's use black for the third case here, 0.58 in the x direction is maybe about there, negative 0.91 in the y direction, maybe about there. So 0.58 minus i, 0.91. So there's my four points that I was able to plot on the complex plane. So that's really all that I need probably from you for this course in the complex numbers. We don't have to get too, too into the complex numbers in this case. I mean, keep Euler's formula in mind, keep uh, foiling in mind the definitions of the real part, the imaginary part, the complex conjugate, etc. But we're not doing complex analysis. I just want everybody to be comfortable with these numbers, kind of manipulating them. I realize that some of these terms um, you know, I left them particularly ugly for you. That's just to give everybody a little bit of practice manipulating numbers. I realize it's it gets hard if, you've, if it's been a little while since you've done some mathematics to keep larger terms in mind the whole time. That's really what you, you want to try your best to do. Um, but if you ever get worried about that, go ahead and whip out a calculator and convert to decimals right away. Anyway, it's a bit of a shorter video today. I hope that's okay with all of you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.